All right, man. Today we're going to be in uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Today's lesson, living as children of the light. So I hope to show you today the difference between a child of the light and a child of darkness. Our passage will be Ephesians chapter 4, 17 through 24. Ephesians chapter 4, 17 through 24. I'll be reading out the NLT version. With the Lord's authority, I say this. Live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasures and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from Him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by the lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on the new nature created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. And so I'd like to break these up. Let's go back to verse 17. With the Lord's authority... I say, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. So those that don't know Christ are hopelessly confused. And Paul here is teaching the Ephesian church not to be like them. And so I hope to teach you that today too, not to live like the world, the Gentiles. And so how do they live? You know, give a couple of examples of how the world lives. They cuss without regard. What else? What, what does the world do? Drunkenness. They get drunk. Self-centered. They're self-centered. They live in a gay lifestyle now. Homosexual lifestyle. Seems to be more accepted. Right? Pride of intellect. Pride of intellect. And so Paul here is saying, don't live that way. And the, he also tells us here that they're hopelessly confused. You know, are they confused about the Bible? What are they confused about? And today, well, think about today. They're confused about gender. You know? A young Brett came over to my house on Thursday, and he asked my daughter, do you know the difference between a male and a female? And she kind of paused. No one's ever asked her the question. I guess people on television can't answer the question. This world is hopelessly confused. They don't know the difference between a male and a female. They confused. What, what else are they confused about? They're confused about the creation of the world. They're confused about marriage. Some people are growing up with two male figures, two female figures. They're confused about evolution, right? And, and the list goes on and on and on. Anyway, well, Paul here is telling us not to be that way. So if I had to give verse 17, what do I learn from verse 17? That those, the children of the light are not confused. We are not hopelessly confused like the world is. Verse 18 from our passage. Their minds, and that's the Gentiles, that those that don't know God, their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives them because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. Their minds are full of darkness, it says. So who has a Matthew uh, 519 passage? What did Jesus say about the mind? 519. Correction. 1519. <laughs> yeah, Matthew 1519. So what does Jesus say about the mind here? 1519. 1519. What does Jesus say about the mind? Uh, pour out pour out of the heart. Come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual, immorality, thief, false testament, and slander. So according to Jesus, what comes out of the heart? Evil thoughts. And he says here in Ephesians that their minds, the Gentiles, their minds are full of darkness. Which tells me that their hearts are full of darkness. Right? Many people say that the devil put evil thoughts into their minds. Well, according to that passage, I don't think it's the devil. I think it's our hearts. Jesus says that our hearts 
are deceitful. The Bible says our hearts are, are deceitful. People say, the devil put this thought in my head. A dark mind equals a dark heart. But the followers of Jesus, they have a renewed mind. A study shows that the average American spends seven and a half hours in front of a screen. That's television, iPhone, <coughs> iPad, or computer. Seven and a half hours of feeding their brains with worldly product. Daily, or what? Daily, or what? On a daily basis, seven and a half hours in front of a screen. That's the average American. At least. Uh, wow. Seven and a half hours. So why are they having bad dreams? Why are we having bad thoughts? Because we're feeding our brains seven and a half hours of, of bad things. So can you imagine if you fed our brain seven and a half hours of Bible? Mm. Would we be having bad dreams? Would we be having evil thoughts? Probably not. Instead, rivers of flowing, flowing would be flowing. Right? Instead of rivers of living, like, amen, that's right. So Romans chapter 2, who has that? I have 12-2. Oh yeah, 12-2. There we go. Correction. 12, Romans 12-2. <laughs> Sacrifice, right? Yes. 12 2. 12 2. 12 2. 12 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. So, what does the Bible say about our minds? To be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We're not going to renew our mind by watching seven and a half hours of screen time. We're going to renew our mind by Bible. Right. One of the Puritans' uh, quotes or values was long, unhurried exposure to the Word of God is the quickest route to holiness mm -hmm. in His presence. They, they practice in their home life. Um, they were several centuries back. There's a lot of bad characters about them, wrong characters. But, um, they would train their children to be able to quote New Testament doctrine extensively by the age of 12. There you go. So, but that that always stuck with me. Long, unhurried exposure to the Word of God is the quickest route to His holiness in our lives. Amen. Always that focus on the Scripture, you know. Yes. Not some inner light or some feeling or some experience, but, but um, the believer can't separate Scripture from from holiness. Scripture from the Holy Spirit. Exactly. That's great. Puritans were great at that. Yeah. Who's got Philippians four eight? So going back to thoughts, evil thoughts. You know, their minds are full of darkness. How should our minds be? Philippians four eight. Do we ever get bad thoughts? Absolutely. But Philippians four eight tells us what to do. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So what are we supposed to think about? Good things, Good things right? See, we've got a choice. We've got the Holy Spirit inside of us. So bad thoughts come in our heads. You know, bring those bad thoughts down. Think of good things, noble things. And then finally, Proverbs 16.3. Who has that one? Commit your ways to the Lord and He will guide your paths. I think is what it says. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and He will establish your plans. I think the New King James Version says He will establish your thoughts. That doesn't know God. Thoughts. Commit yourself to the Lord. Romans 8.5. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set of what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set with on what the Spirit desires. So those that live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. Those that live according to the Spirit, things of the Spirit. So lesson number two here. Children of the light have renewed minds. Their minds are full of light. They are not full of darkness. Let's go on to, um, back to Ephesians 4, 418. The second part of that. So that those that don't know God, it says they wander far from the life God gives them because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. They wander far from the life God gives. 
Think about that. Someone that doesn't know God, invite them to church. They run. Invite them to Bible study. They run. Invite them to a prayer meeting. They run. Invite them to fellowship. They run. Anything that has to do with the Lord, they run. But what, but what if you invite them to a sports event? They'll come. They'll come. What about a bar, a picnic, a party, a fish fry? They come. They come. You see, but children of the light, children of the light are totally different. You know, we're totally different. Psalm 63, 1. Got it. Uh, that's me. Pete. Okay. Oh, both of you, huh? I got two of those. Oh, God, you are my God. I shall seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. King David is a child of the light. He says, oh, my God. Early will I seek you, one translation says. He seeks God. And then John chapter 10, verse 27. Got it. Oh, Pete. Again. What does Jesus say his sheep do? 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. The sheep of Jesus hear his voice. They're not wandering far from, from the things that God gives. They're drawing close to it. They want to hear God's word. They're not. I don't have to convince them to, to hear God's word. God, child God's voice. Life. Yes, God's voice, the Bible. And then, uh, finally, Acts chapter 2, verse 46. Who has that one? Acts 2, 46. Yes. Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together, and they, that's the church, um, were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. You see that? What were the early Christians doing? They were fellowshipping daily. They were, getting, they were breaking bread together. They were listening to, to, to the disciples' teachings. This is on a daily basis. This is what children of the light do. So lesson number three out of Ephesians 4.18 is that believers don't wander away from what Christ offers. Believers seek God. They follow his teachings. They want to listen to Jesus. And they fellowship with other believers. Ephesians 4.19. They, those that don't know God, they have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasures, and they eagerly practice every kind of impurity. So those that don't know God have no sense of shame. Think about that. No sense of shame. Do you know what month this is? This is the month of June. They call this Pride Month. No sense of shame. <laughs> really, there's no sense of shame for this month. Today we have couples that don't get married and they live together. When I was growing up, it was a shameful thing to not be married and living together. There's no sense of shame. Abortion, no sense of shame. Foul language, rated R, movies. I mean, movies that you, T can't have watch television today. No sense of shame, There's every, everything's just out there. Sin, there's no sense of shame. Do you have any examples of anything? I don't, I don't want to ruin the parade, but I want to see that. Last night here, oh, yeah. the, new, the new movie. I heard about that. Uh, I don't want to ruin it for you, but there's a, there's a scene there where uh, where one woman probably shows her ring. I'm engaged, right? So yeah. I'm not going to assume it's what it's another, it's another man. And then this is an animated cartoon <clears throat> made for children out of those story. Right. And here comes another female. Mm -hmm. And they both together. And, I, and then it shows. Later she's pregnant, waiting for a child, but two females, right? So evidently she must be. And then they, they have uh, multiple children, and you can see the trend. They make it visible that you know that these children are also so, springs of, of. Wow. So they multiply, you know. And even the grandchild, the grandchild, I'm talking about three generations now, huh, is emulating. You know, the lifestyle of her grandmother has been lesbian, you know, 
so it's like I, I didn't you threw them an animated cartoon man come on right 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 you go in there like thinking oh I'm gonna hold some fun and you get slapped across the face with with this hideous uh, mentality you know those that don't know God have no sense of shame see and that shouldn't be us so think of Adam and Eve what happened to them when they found out that they sinned they made some clothes to hide their nudity you know, King David, Psalms 51. Believers are not going to practice sin and not feel any shame. You know, King David, Psalms 51. Who has that one? Psalms 51, 1 through 4. <clears throat> How does King David feel about his sin? There's some shame there. And then what about Peter? Luke 5, 8. Remember Peter? Jesus was, um, I think they were fishing. And then Jesus told them to, to cast a net. And they're like, Lord, we fished all night. We're not catching anything. Nevertheless, I'll do it. Throws out his net. There's a, there's, there's a, a, a tremendous amount of fish. In fact, there's so much fish that the boat starts to sink. Right? And what does Peter do? Luke 5 8. Luke 5 8. But when Simon Peter saw that, and that was the miracle of, of the fish, he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. So you see, children of the light do not lose their sense of shame for sin. We don't practice sin and not feel guilty, not feel shame. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit and we grieve the Holy Spirit. See? So that's lesson number four, is that we don't lose our sense of shame. Let's go on. Ephesians chapter four, John verse... Giles or Thomas Giles. Verse... <laughs> Ephesians chapter four, verse 20 and 21. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from Him... We'll go with that. So, children of the light... According to verse 20, that isn't what you learned about Christ. They learn about Christ. The children of the light learn about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus, they hear about Jesus, and they learn the truth. So notice here that they're learning the truth. They're learning about Jesus. I know it's popular to learn about other religions and, and do all these other studies. You know, you got some young kids that want to learn about Jehovah's Witnessism or Mormonism. Anything wrong with that? No, there isn't. But, you know, you ought to be so focused on learning about Jesus and learning the truth that when falseness comes along, you'll know the difference. Jesus is the truth. So learn about Jesus as much as much as you can. Secondary is all the other, the other things. But um, what are ways we can learn about Jesus? Learn about Christ. We have discipleship. We have fellowship. We have church. We have Bible studies. How else? How else can we learn more about Christ? Bible. Remember David said, I think Peter had read, early in the morning will I seek you. He seeks the Lord. You learn more about Christ. So what did Jesus say about those who believed in him? John 8, 31. Does anybody have that? He said to those Jews who believed him. This said to those Jews who believed him. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. A couple of things there. Those that he, he was speaking to those who believed. And those who believe will abide in his word and they will know the truth. So a true believer of Jesus Christ wants to learn more and more about Jesus. Wants to learn more and more about the truth. Don't worry about the false stuff. Learn the truth. So when false, falseness comes, you're able to protect yourself, your heart, your family from false teaching. Learn the truth. Jesus is the truth. What is what comes to read? When the truth will shall set, set you free. free. What what Amen. I don't know. Uh, I know what comes to my mind, but I'm curious. What is what comes to mind when you hear that last part? The truth will set you free. What, what does that mean? Mind? How are you free? Freedom from anxiety, fear, bondage, anything that's holding you from being what you're supposed to be. Slaves to sin. Slaves to sin. Or this guy or that thing or this thing. Yeah. Subjective. 
But don't you think, as an unbeliever or unbelievers, it always seems to me that they're always in a, always trapped in this ball of confusion. I think you mentioned confusion earlier. Yes. Trapped in a ball of confusion, right? At, at some point, all the intellectuals at one point, they don't know if they should believe that guy or this guy or that thing or this thing or themselves or not believe themselves, always questioning themselves, right? There's a ball of confusion. And I think in that passage, the end, the end to all that is knowing the truth. Once you know the truth, that confusion ends and stops. Amen. Because now, now you know, know the truth. Now you know the truth. No need to be confused anymore. That's the thought that always hits me when I read that or I hear that. All right, sorry. A couple, can I throw a couple things? Yeah, of course. Jesus said in John 16, 13, but when he, the spirit of truth, and that's the Holy Spirit, comes, he will guide you into all truth. So um, someone has the Holy Spirit inside them, they're going to be led to the truth. Some people are going to do it maybe a little faster than others because they're gonna, just going to jump right into the Word of God. But if you're a believer and you have the Holy Spirit in you, um, you're going to be led back to Scripture. Always, mm -hmm. even if you you fall into sin for a time, you, you're always going to be led back to Scripture. You were talking about human philosophy, this philosopher, that philosopher, in Jeremiah seventeen nine, um, it says, "The heart is more deceitful than all else, and is desperately sick. Who can understand it?" <laughs> That's why we can't trust human philosophy right? because it's because on my own, of course, I'm always going to be right. Of course, God always agrees with me, but. So lesson five here, a child of the light wants to learn more and more about Jesus, the truth. Let's go on to uh, Ephesians 4.22. Now that you learn the truth and now that you have the light, what do we do? Verse 22. Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Throw off or put off your old sinful nature. Your former way of life. So I ask, what was your former way of life? Whatever it was, put it away. Throw it off. If you were a liar, put it away. If you were an adulterer, put it away. If you had outbursts of wrath, put it away. If you were impatient, put it away. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit. Remember, we talked about the Holy Spirit. We know the truth now. Put it away. How? By the power of Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, new creation. It doesn't say he will become a new creation. It doesn't say you will work at being a new creation. If any man be in Christ, you are a new creation. Throw off your former way of life, now that you know the truth. Through the power of Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. So children of the light are new creations and they put off their old sinful nature. Ephesians 4, 23 and 24. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and your attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So let the Spirit do what? Renew your thoughts and your attitudes. See, we were once dead to our sin, right? Now we're going to be alive. Think you are spirit and your life. 63. Only the Holy Spirit can renew our thoughts and our attitudes. John 6, 63. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and your life. So it's the Spirit who gives a life. You know, you want your mind renewed and you want your attitudes renewed? The Holy Spirit does that. The Spirit gives life. And life more abundantly. See, once you cannot renew your mind, I cannot renew your attitudes. Jesse cannot renew my thoughts and my attitudes. He can't renew your thoughts and your attitudes. Your pastor can't do that. Books cannot do that. Schools cannot do that. Only the Spirit of God can do that. The Holy Spirit can take a man like the Apostle Paul. He was set to go persecute Christian people. 
he was a racist for, against Christians. And in his mind, in his heart, he's doing the right thing. And he has an encounter with Jesus Christ. Jesus changes his mind and his attitude. And all of a sudden, he's loving these Christians. And in fact, he dies for these Christians. Who can do that? Did books do that? Did school do that to him? The Holy Spirit did that to him, right? And only Holy Spirit can change a man. The Holy Spirit alone. And so how can we receive the Holy Spirit? Luke 11. Who has a Luke 11, um, 11 to 13? I do. For a fish, we'll give him a snake instead. Or if he asks for an egg, we'll give you a scorpion. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So how can we receive the Holy Spirit? By asking God for it. Ask your Father. Ask your Father for the Holy Spirit, yes. So this last lesson here is that children of the light, they allow the Holy Spirit to renew their thoughts and their attitudes. They put on a new nature to be righteous and holy like God. You know, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. So my encouragement today is to ask for the Holy Spirit. You know, this is, this is how much more will our Father give us the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Right? Seek and you shall find. So to recap, lesson number one was that children of the light do not live like the world and they're not confused. Number two, children of the light do not have a mind full of darkness. They have a mind full of light. Three, children of the light seek God and they don't wander away from the things of God. Children, number four, children of the light do not continue sinning and feel no shame. Number five, children of the light want to learn more and more about Jesus, the truth. Number six, children of the light are new creation. They throw off their former way of living. And finally, number seven, children of the light allow the Holy Spirit to renew their thoughts and their attitudes and they put on a new nature. Open up for discussion.